Hi guys, and welcome back to Wade's Workshop. And this is just a little bit of a shop update. There will be some machining in it. I've got a little modification I've got to do again, uh, you know, back on the lathe. Um, but we'll show you that in a minute. Um, but the major reason for this update is the shed extension. Now, I've been talking about this shed extension for some months. And it's going to be behind where the camera is now, out that way, uh, another metre or so. Um, and the whole object of the extension is going to be to put or to give me room so that I can get a milling machine in the workshop. The fabled milling machine I keep threatening to buy. But obviously I've got to do the extension before I can do the milling machine. Now I meant to start this a few weeks ago do the extension but uh, I literally haven't had a chance. Life has got in the way all the rest of it as you know as it does. Um, so you know I haven't started it. Now I'm quite busy this week. Uh, I'm at a wedding next weekend. It's that time of year when you know people get married. You know, it tends to be the summertime so I won't be able to uh, have a look at it next weekend. But the following week, I'm going to start ordering materials in. I mean, it'll only take me a couple of days once I've got the materials. Um, but get the materials in for the shed extension. So that is to come. I promise it'll be with us shortly. On the subject of the milling machine, once I built the new extension, I mean, the whole idea was to give me room for a milling machine. Uh, and first thought was, yeah, I'll have a great big area there. I can put a milling machine in it. Job done. But I was sort of having other thoughts on that, and that I might be better off moving sort of all the tools and equipment from this end into the new area to keep it like a clean area for tools, and to put the milling machine behind me here on the bench, um, you know, with grinders, what have you, in this area to keep all the machining up at this end of the shed, so that, you know, flying swarf is all down here and all the clean area is down in the new end. So I think that's probably what I'm going to do, but until I've built the extension, I won't know. So it's, it's a work in progress. It's a, a, a typical uh, scenario of make it up as you go along. <laughs> I think that's probably what we'll be doing. OK, so this little machining uh, job, I have a tool post, an aluminium circular tool post that I use for boring bars or did use for boring bars when I had the uh, compound slide on the lathe. But now that I've got the uh, compound replacement block, the little boring bar um, tool post, should we call it, doesn't fit. Um, so I need to modify that slightly and we'll take you through that now. So with my new riser block, what I have found is that my boring bar holder doesn't fit. Well, it fits physically over the thread, but it won't go down to the base. Um, unlike my quick change tool post, I do want this to be able to rotate. So I think what I'm going to do is do a couple of measurements from the outside to the, uh, to the register and turn this down so that it's just slightly below the smallest measurement across there. So I'm going to strip this down, strip the tool out of it and the bolts, put it up in the fore jaw. I've already got the fore jaw here and we're going to give it a skim down to fit on here so that it'll sit down to the full or to the bottom position and still be able to rotate. So I've just set it up approximately. I mean, it's in there. I haven't started clocking it up yet. I'm just going to put a few little pieces of plastic under each one of the jaws, or a piece of plastic under each one of the jaws, um, just to stop it marking the, uh, the surface of the aluminium when I tighten the chuck up and what have you. There we go. Uh, let's just... Uh, yeah, it's back firm against the back face. So I'll bring you around the other side and we'll just clock that up. So let's have a look, find the high point. High point there, just make sure it's tight, yeah. Low point there, loosen off, Oop. <laughs> bang the clock, <laughs> loosen off on the low point. Some people use two chuck keys for this, but uh, we're nearly there already. High point. High point. Let's just go around and tighten up the drawers, we're all a bit slack still. That's going to knock it out again. Right, OK. High point there. <laughs> I made it worse. Just get that uh, dial out of the way. There we are. See, I'm not that 
not worried about it. Actually slightly out of round by the look of it. Within a couple of hundredths. Ah, that draws a little loose. Just over a hundredth in it, hundredth of a millimetre. Metric clock this, measures in hundredths. I think we can manage with that. I could chase it round a bit longer, but uh, what's the point for a hundredth? I've just had a quick measure between the register and the shoulders in both directions. And well, the tightest is just over 20.6. So if I called it 20.6, the diameter will want to be twice that, that's 40.2 uh, uh, and 18 mil, that's 41, which is the whole size, 41.2, 51.2, no, 59.2, is it? Yes, 59.2. Okay, so I'm looking for a diameter of 59.2 on the part. I've just skimmed back half a mil. And from the point where the flat is, it's leaving a wall about half mil thick. So I think what I'll do is I'll skim it back to uh, just clean up that wall, so to remove that wall off there, because I don't uh, I don't want that sharp edge left. Um, and it is like half a millimetre thick. So yeah, I'll just skim it back. Just see what point it clears that. Give myself a zero there, we'll have another look at that. Okay, so we've gone beyond that step now, so I'm quite happy with that. Right, well, there is four mil aside, there's eight millimeters to come off this, so I'm going to skim it off, perhaps half mil cuts at a time. So if I take another half mil, just hand feeding this. <laughs> I don't want to spray the camera in that swarm. There we are, that's point one from that first shoulder. So I'll just uh, keep out the way of that string and swarm. Come around the other side, twist the lathe off. Grab my pliers. Rusty old pair of pliers, I haven't been using these in a while. <laughs> right, well I'll carry on. Half mil cuts, as I said. To avoid getting big, long, stringy swore, I'm just stop starting as I hand feed to keep the. Uh, <laughs> well, sometimes it works. <laughs> I was going to say to keep the swarf into manageable short little bits that are less likely to wrap round the chuck. But, uh, yeah, sod's law, it wrapped round the chuck. <laughs> Let's just have another little measure of that. So I'm looking for 59.2 as a finished size. And I'm bang on, near as damn it at the moment, 64 mil. So I'm going to take another 2 mil aside and I'll bring you back. I'm getting quite close on size now. Um, I haven't got a 50 to 75 millimeter mic, but I do have a two to three inch, a nice, uh, a nice star at number four three six. Um, and I've got a two inch gauge, and oh, I don't know how well it shows on there, but yeah, just checked it, and it is reading smack on zero. So, fifty nine point two divided by twenty five point four. That'll give me the uh, inches, I suppose. So I'm looking for a diameter of 2.331 inches, and I've got 2.358. So that'll be uh, 27 thou. So just uh, swap my DR over to uh, Imperial. 27 thou, so yeah, 13 thou aside. Okay. So I take 6 thou first. Mm. 
and that cut quite nicely. So it should be seven thou left on there. I'll make it up again. There's no friction symbol on this mic, but that feels right. Um, what was I looking for? 331, 346, 325, 345, 346, 346 from 331, 15. So that would be, well, seven and a half thou aside. So yeah, I crept up on that diameter and measured it up with the mic. And I managed to get ooh, two point three three zero. So yeah, I'm about I'm about a thou under what I was aiming at, but happy days. It's it's a clearance anyway. So the next thing I want to do is to chamfer um, both of these just with a small chamfer. So yeah, got the chamfering tool up there. Let's just slow down a bit. All right, so I've just pulled it out of the chuck. Yeah, it's clear in there. We'll go for that. And if I put the original washer from uh, how it used to fit on the compound and the nut. Ah, <laughs> yeah, sod's law. Okay, the handle on the top is now pointing, well, in the wrong direction. I want that to lock off about that sort of position to keep it out of the way, you know, so you can see what you're doing and what have you. Round there is no good. So I think what I'll do is I'll put it there where I want it and I'll just with a feeler gauge measure the gap. Let me just find a feeler gauge. Let's have a look. Uh, oh, I think these need a little bit of work. <laughs> That's a half mil. That goes under. I'm going to find a point six. Yes, that was a 0 0.5, 0 0.6, um, perhaps 0 0.7, let's find 0 0.7, there's 0 0.7, there, oh I do need to do a bit of work on these, they've been sat in the drawer too long, it's the trouble, I've got three or four sets, um, yeah, I think we'll go for 0 0.7, 0 0.75, something like that. So what I'm going to do is make a new washer to replace that one, 0 0.75 thicker. So, having a mind like a sieve, plus 0 0.75. I'll write it on there, and I won't forget it. So the original one is 4.9 thick, uh, plus 0.75 is going to be 5.85. So I found a piece of steel, as you can see, <laughs> from a, a previous project, just slightly too large, but the time I skim that knurl off, we'll be right. So, let's just face it off. The remnants of an old center in there, I'll just get that out, it's going to be a tiny bit more, I think. Probably go a bit faster than this, I think. Yeah. Speed it up a bit. I know this is a piece of the N8. We've got various bits of the N8 around the workshop. Okay. We we'll face it off. I'll just centre drill it. Be kind to it. Stop that chuck. Take the centre out. We'll put a chuck in there. And I think we'll start with a six mil drill. 
finish hole's got to be 10 mil diameter so I'll put a 6 through then a 10 I haven't got to go very deep I'll drill it about 10 12 mil deep it's only got to be well 5.85 deep but I, I want to set a when I part it off I want to be parting into a hole it's a lot easier than parting into a half a hole so to speak Okay, turn off again, let's just change that drill bit out. 10 mil drill. I don't know what this drill bit's like, I'll slow down a tap. I had a feeling this 10mm drill wasn't very good. I'm sure I meant to grind it after the last time I used it. Let's have a look. Strangely, it doesn't look bad. Anyway. Okay, so we'll drill the 10mm hole and we'll just shamp for that. There we go. That'll do me. Let's have that chuck out of the way so you can see a bit better. There we go. Right, and we'll skim the OD of this next, I believe. So let's just touch off on the top. Uh, give myself some zeros. Let's take 0.15 off it aside. the original part was let's have a look 25 mil nominal and that is just under I can go a bit smaller so I just want to clean that mill up really let's go another 0.15 aside and just drop my uh, centre drill and hold that I think that's cleaned the knurl up. Oh, there's traces of it. Okay, touch more. I can still see little marks from the uh, knurl there. Let's speed it up a bit. Forgot to put a cut on. <laughs> okay, we'll go for that. So the original one has a nice 45 on the top, so we'll do the same again. 45 degree tool. Got a bit keen with that. Um, yep, that'll do the job. So up with a party tool. Okay, so I'm going to touch the parting tool on this front face. It does help if you tighten up the parting tool in the tool post. Just touch it there, give yourself a zero. 
Party tool is one and a half mil wide, and I want 5.85. So 5.85 plus 1.5 is. Let's have a look. Is that 7.35? Yeah. So if I come forward, 7.35. Hold on. Touch on there. Seven point three five. Seven point three. There we are, seven point three five. Lock my carriage. I think I might be a little fast. Let's see how this parts. quite well. I don't know what that chattering was. Um, yeah, anyway, right, dig it out. I would imagine that that's quite warm. <laughs> well I was looking for 5.85 and part it off that's measuring 5.86. Um, yeah I still haven't skimmed it. It's still got the, the bit on the middle as you can see. You just get back in there. Five point eight. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Five point eight six. Five point eight seven. So I think we'll uh, we'll live with that. So just put the part up the other way in the chuck. Just holding it loosely. Put a little chamfer on that underside. And there we go. Let's got rid of that. And I just need to deburn now around the OD. Um. I wonder if I put it up on a 10 mil bolt with a nut on it, whether I'd be able to just access that. I should have put a chamfer on when I was halfway through parting off. May be able to just bring it forward. Let's have a look. Just bring it forward in the chuck a touch. Let me just nip that chuck lightly. I should be able to just use my little push tool in there, I would have thought. Okay, so I've just got it sticking out the chuck couple of millimetres. It wasn't that bad actually. And just squared up the face. I didn't have the chuckle that tight for squaring it up. Let me just tighten it up again. There we go. And on my 45 degree tool. I should be able to just get in there with a corner of the tool. Not quite that close, eight. <laughs> there we go. And just put a little chamfer on the other side as well. So let's try it again. Oh, well, I'll go with that. <laughs> that worked out better than I thought it was going to. Um, yeah, well, that's that job done. Nice new washer. Handles on the right way. Um, just need to put the screws back in my uh, my boring bar holder now, and the boring bar back in. Um, I think that's the ten mil boring bar on that side. That's the one. Put this little scrump clip. Scrump clues. I nearly said <laughs> his little clamp screws back in. The Allen key is somewhere, there it is. Okay, so I've got 
My little boring bar holder, I don't know whether I've shown this before. Um, yeah, a little boring, yeah, I, I definitely showed it before, I think I showed making it. So, uh, yeah, if you look back into some early episodes on Aids Workshop, you'll see me making this boring bar holder. Um, it takes a 10mm boring bar on that side, and a 12mm boring bar, let me just uh, bring everything out of the way. I can spin it around the other way, and put a 12mm boring bar on that side. And those are the two boring bars I've got, so yeah, I mean, it's a handy little thing. And when I want to change back to my uh, to my quick change tool post quick simple jobs are good <laughs> so Jackie asked me the other day to stick a plaque on the wall at the back of the house um, it's something that's been in the garden for a long time. In fact, it was a gift from my mother many years ago. Um, but now that sort of the back of the house is finished, we thought it did look nice up on the wall and she asked me to put it up. So I had a look around to see what I had adhesive wise. And uh, I had a tube of uh, like baguette nails or something like that, it's called. Um, you know, squeezy, squeezy tube, put it in the gun, glob it all over the back, whack it on the wall, put a piece of wood against it to hold it for 10 minutes, jobs are good. And it was. Anyway, uh, some week or so later, after a couple of days of rain, there was an almighty bang at the back and it fell on the floor. So I'll show you the plaque in question. In fact, I'll, I'll give you a quick clip of this now. So yeah, it probably only weighs a couple of pound, a kilo, something like that. Um, but it came down, thankfully it didn't break, uh, and bounced on the deck in happy days it didn't break. But uh, I looked at the uh, the tube of forget nails or no nails or something like that it was called, and it did say for indoor use only, and the water had got behind it, and um, yeah, it fell off the wall. So I thought, well, <laughs> that wasn't very clever. So I looked about for a product that would uh, stick it on there that was, you know, usable outside in water all the rest of it something where it wasn't going to fall down a second time well i came across a product and it, the name of it made me laugh now i'm not sure if this is available sort of worldwide across the pond all that or whether it's just a uk name for the product but the name of it did make me laugh so anyway this is the stuff i used it's an evo stick brand and it's called well read between the lines it sticks like shit <laughs> well, I thought that if that doesn't do it, what's going to do it? But actually, yeah, I was, I was uh, quite impressed with it. It uh, it does exactly what it says on the tube. Uh, yeah, it's just the name of it. How can you get away with calling something that? But uh, they obviously have, and uh, they've put a little star in, but we all know what it means. Sticks like shit. And it does too. Well, as quick little updates go, I think that's about it, guys. We did have a little bit of machining, so that was a bonus. Next videos are probably going to be on the shed extension. Now, there's two ways I could do these. Um, quick sort of time lapse, wall by wall going up, you know, that sort of idea. Or I could, you know, film how I've planned it out and gone through it. Um, I'll throw the question out there. What do you want, guys? Do you want to see me doing it step by step? Or shall I just flick through the basics of what I've done? Um, it's basically building a shed and I imagine the majority of you only come here really to see metalwork. You don't want to see somebody building a garden shed extension. So we'll see. I'll put the question out there. I'll see what the reactions are. Anyway, we've had quite a few new subscribers in the last month, uh, something like 450 new subscribers. So welcome to you all and thanks for subscribing. Right. That's about it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing once again, and we'll see you all very soon. Cheers now.